Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with what some wonder might kick off a wave of AI-related IPOs. Specifically, chip-making startup Cerebra Systems has filed for an IPO, and as part of that, we got a bunch of information about the company. The financial documents that were filed reveal what is undeniably a fast-growing but still relatively small company. Cerebrus reported $136 million in sales for the first half of this year with a net loss of $66 million. That is a massive increase from the $8.7 million in sales they did in the same period of last year while recording $77 million in net losses. A more interesting part of the filings disclosed that sales to Abu Dhabi's Group 42, or G42, were responsible for around 83% of the firm's revenue. Cerebrus claims to have the required licensing to export their chips to UAE, but so far the sales are all intended to be installed in U.S. data centers. The company's IPO valuation hasn't been revealed at this stage, but Bloomberg suggested the company would target $1 billion of share sales at a $7 to $8 billion valuation. Of course, how successful Cerebrus's IPO would be might be less about Cerebrus or even AI, and more about the IPO market in general. The IPO window was slammed shut in 2022 and is frankly yet to reopen. According to some recent statistics, the last three years have seen just 14 tech IPOs in the U.S., a stretch that is worse than those following the dot-com bubble and the financial crisis. One of Cerebrus's competitors, Ampere Computing, was recently rumored to be exploring a potential sale instead of an IPO. Last month, Bloomberg wrote, The move suggests that Ampere doesn't see an easy path to an initial public offering. Though the company stands to benefit from the continuing AI frenzy, the market has grown more competitive, with several large tech companies rushing to develop the same kind of chips Ampere makes. Now, when it comes to people's reactions, there was, on the one hand, some amount of optimism. Investor Bill Gurley tweeted, Hopefully Cerebrus is the beginning of the AI IPO wave. Who's next? Others, though, were more skeptical. Midjourney researcher Finbar writes, Cerebrus claims massive improvements over H100s, but their revenue is only $100 million. So you either have to believe that, one, all the AI labs don't know about this, or two, their claims are poop emoji. Nikolai Yakovenko tweets, If I were Cerebrus, I'd IPO too. So much demand for billion-dollar AI stocks. We'll see more of this. The Financial Times was somewhere between circumspect and outright skeptical, though. In Alphaville, which frankly is kind of notoriously antagonistic towards the industries they cover, calls this a test case of the AI frenzy. Editor Robin Wigglesworth writes, Cerebrus is an unprofitable AI company utterly dependent on selling chips to one of its biggest investors, which might not actually be able to take them out of the country. Naturally, it is seeking an IPO with an $8 billion valuation. Then again, the demand might be there. An unnamed VC said, There has been a near insatiable desire from public investors to find and back the next NVIDIA. This isn't just about chasing the latest trend. The momentum is also benefiting several VC-funded chip startups that have been toiling away for nearly a decade. Moving over into regulation land, Malaysia is planning to introduce AI regulations focused on the ethical use of the technology. The country has seen substantial investment from global tech firms over the past year to cater to growing demand for cloud and AI services. As part of the broader policy, the company is planning to establish a national AI office. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim said, We aim to position Malaysia as a hub for generative AI, and investments from tech partners will be critical in building a robust and secure digital infrastructure. The new government AI agency will be tasked with coordinating initiatives, establishing a five-year technology action plan, as well as creating a regulatory framework to increase adoption within the next 12 months. Meanwhile, over in Europe, the chief executive of Europe's largest software firm has warned against overregulation of AI. During a visit to Silicon Valley, SAP's Christian Klein told the Financial Times, quote, I'm totally against regulating the technology. It would harm the competitiveness of Europe a lot if I can better test my AI models here. If we overregulate using data for developing new AI in Europe, but in the U.S. it is still okay, then you're at a massive disadvantage. At this stage, all of the worst concerns about the EU's AI bill have kind of started to play out. In recent weeks, of course, we've seen OpenAI and Meta roll out new voice features, each with the caveat that they will not be available in the EU. Lack of access to the latest models also leaves EU-based SaaS companies unable to keep up. Both Salesforce and Oracle are racing to implement AI features in their product suites, while leading EU competitors are held back by regulation. SAP's Klein, however, suggested that EU lawmakers are beginning to see the problem. Again to the Financial Times, he said, I'm super close to all the discussions in Europe, and as the biggest software company, we have a certain voice in that. I think the right discussion is happening in Europe right now. How can we regulate the impact on businesses on end users? Don't regulate the technology, regulate the outcome. Lastly today, a report from the land of agents. Politico has teamed up with a Y Combinator-backed AI startup called Capital AI to create a type of agent that will effectively allow readers to more easily consume Politico's content. Semaphore writes, 
The new AI tool will aim to help users quickly pull together information from Politico and Politico Pro content to create comprehensive reports on topics instantly. Capital AI CEO said, This is not about automating journalism. It's about unlocking the end user, the lobbyist, the government affairs person at Uber, at SpaceX, at Airbnb, to better understand what's happening in Washington, what regulations are coming, and making business decisions quickly. Instead of having to parse through huge volumes of bill text, you can put in a prompt and our generative model looks through that rich information from Politico and gives you a report back. Now, this is definitely part of a larger trend where instead of deals between publishers and AI companies being just about getting access to the back catalogs from those publishers to train their new models, instead it's more about new types of products at the intersection of publishing and AI. In many cases with OpenAI in particular, that's been all about how a particular outlet's content appears in the results of a ChatGPT prompt. And this is another example of how new types of products will be built that allow people to interact with content in new ways. Y Combinator's Gary Tan said, agentic LLMs are going to be the biggest revenue drivers for media brands. It's a research assistant and persuasive writer at your fingertips. Interesting to see agents finally go into production mode, something we will be watching here closely for sure. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief headlines. Next up, the main episode.